Dude, Luke, the printer's still ah. busted, man. What the fuck? Everybody. Welcome to episode 99 of the Topless Robot Podcast. My name is Ryan. 99? 99? Yeah. Oh, man. Next week's 100? Yep. What? Of course, we're all stuck at home so we can't do anything special. That's yeah. disappointing. Yeah. I'm Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Kalen. And uh, yeah, it's uh, uh, been a week of things. We are uh, without uh, Dan and Brooks this week, unfortunately. But fortunately, that means we've got Kalen here with us. So, um, Brooks and Dunn, as. Um, Kalen, uh, you played uh, a convention this weekend that is the first of its kind. Uh, yeah, and uh, we played the game on Mega Drive, and yeah, which is just a great, great play on words there. Yeah, yeah, it was a really cool uh, game convention. It, you know, it's hard to call it a convention at that point since you know so much of a convention you know consists of uh, vendors and the sure. s- more social aspects of a convention you know it's kind of a social thing but uh it was a drive-in event people in their cars got to witness you know uh a a smash bros tournament and a bunch of cool movies and video games uh entertainment and my band snail mate played to a bunch of people in their cars and we were pumped in through the radio all drive-in style and it was uh yeah, it was really cool to be a part of it. And we haven't played live since March, so I was really stoked on it. Nice. Uh, how yeah. was it yeah. uh, um, playing outdoors? Like, uh, I know you guys played at like 9 o'clock, so had it kind of cooled down by then? Yeah, we have played much hotter, you know, times and stuff, so that wasn't bad. Um, again, having not played live since March, you know, you can do all the live streams, and we practice, you know, five times a week, and it still is a completely different beast plus being outside uh there was nowhere there's no nothing to soak up any sound so like the drums not only were they mic'd but there was no reverberation so everything was super dry and punchy and it was uh you know my voice not echoing off anything and just like dying as soon as it left the monitors it was uh it was an adjustment you know interesting and we we normally play you know 200 something shows a year and uh I definitely felt some rust yeah. for sure. Yeah. But Feel uh, good to get out there and, and uh, perform though? It did. I, I I get nervous no matter what, but I was pretty nervous. And uh, that combined with my PTSD and anxiety from this whole coronavirus thing, you know, it took some getting over. And even though the staff was masked up and everyone was very uh, respectful and everyone, you know, kept their distance, um, I have a lot of anxiety and hypochondria just running rampant these days. So like it took a while for my nerves to settle. Sure. Yeah. But it was really cool and everyone was so nice. That's awesome. I'm glad that, uh, went well. Yeah. Thank you for, uh, having, suggesting my band to play. I really (laughs) appreciate it. That's so freaking cool that they pumped it in through the, car radios uh car radios like that is awesome yeah (laughs) yeah yeah i wasn't sure how they were going to do that i knew that they were at least going to be pumping in the the audio (laughs) from uh the movies uh to the car stereos but i didn't know uh if they had the capability to for you know uh stuff like the band and, and what was coming through the pa and whatnot but that's awesome yeah i wish i could have heard how it sounded but uh yeah it's really cool that i know some of my friends up in like say north dakota and montana have been doing drive-in concerts and uh it would be a really cool thing to catch on there's not a whole lot of spaces to do it here and it is so freaking hot outside and being stuck in your car i can't imagine if you didn't have ac in there but uh 
hopefully stuff like that catches on some more as a socially distanced, you know, uh, responsible way to still get some live entertainment. Yeah, right. Wouldn't that be such a weird side effect of this whole thing that if drive-ins became a thing again? Yeah, right. <laughs> the world may have shut down. The only thing that's being benefited is the drive-in <laughs> market. I know Harkins is doing some down in Chandler. Uh, there's all sorts of deals that are going on right now. Yeah, it's it's weird. People are you got to respect the ingenuity of people to you know kind of make things happen you know despite the overwhelming you know odds and everything like that so yeah and i mean it's it's actually pretty entertaining uh considering uh, like uh it's so i know so, like you said harkins is is doing uh drive-ins and stuff like that um but uh a lot of the theaters like amc i think uh, and whatever are only getting mad at film distributors uh, like Disney now, who is yeah. taking Mulan to Disney Plus for thirty dollars. I know Tom Hanks was pissed when his submarine movie, uh, instead of getting a theatrical release, uh, the the company decided to sell it to uh, Apple to go on Apple TV because they're like, we need to make some money off of this thing. Yeah, you know, and like obviously, no one wants your badass big budget submarine movie to be watched on an iphone but like <laughs> as a distributor and as a business move it makes sense right but you know these theaters could be looking into drive-in options instead of complaining and boycotting you know these distributors and and uh, film you know companies like uh disney and shit in uh trying to do digital distribution as a solution because it's not like the cinema industry has been ready with the solutions themselves mm -mm. it'll be interesting to see how this mulan thing turns out personally 30 dollars for a digital download it, way too much <laughs> does it stay in your disney plus library like does it just unlock it and then you can watch it anytime you want According, that's what i have read yeah okay. so it's like you 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 get to you get it you get it as long as you have disney plus but i mean that's kind of like a i feel like if it was like a digital download that you could download it and it'd be yours forever like that i'd probably be more privy to it but like mm -hmm. there's something just feels weird that it's like 30 dollars for something that you only have if you pay them more money. <laughs> well, think about it. On top it, of the ten dollars a month, right? Think about it this way, though: um, if you're going to uh, the theater with a group, right? The total amount that that you're spending is easily thirty dollars. Oh yeah, you know, probably more than that, uh, considering ticket the, prices and stuff like that. Uh, you're paying for the experience too, though. It's like, the big screen, the speakers. Yeah, I suppose. You know, I the mean, sticky floors. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um I, I miss those sticky floors. Don't even make jokes. <laughs> At this point, I'll take any sticky floors. Just get me out of the fucking house. <laughs> All right, I'll be over to make your floors sticky before you know it. <laughs> Thank um, you, Ryan. I'll bring milk beds. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I don't know. Like, uh, I know that if uh, I've worked to, um, you know, try and do a theater experience at home because i hate going to the theater unless it's alamo uh and so i've got you know a nice big tv and a surround sound system and and stuff like that i'd prefer to to watch stuff you know in in my living room and i know most people don't necessarily have like that kind of setup and uh, or whatever um but i would happily spend 30 bucks on something that i want to see like really bad first run uh, speaking of the, the digital distribution and whatnot, uh, uh, Bill and Ted Face of Music is coming out at the end of this month, and they're yeah. uh, in select theaters and digital. So, Ooh. like, that's an example of one that day one, I'm I'm paying for that ticket. Very true. Right. It would be nice, though, uh, like Tyler was saying, if you got a digital download of, say, Mulan, so then you can, you know, take the time, download the huge file and then watch it uncompressed. So you're not at the whims of your, your bandwidth speed and, you know, the dips in quality that can occur, you know, of whoever the heck in your house logs onto the internet in another room, like then you could watch it fully uncompressed as big as you want. Like if 
they gave you that option to get that whole file because you're paying 30 bucks and then you're going to watch something in like what 720p maybe like that would suck that would suck um the i think most people don't have the capability of watching a downloaded file though or the know-how right because there's there's not like a a ready-made set-top box for receiving that deliverable you know all the Mm. stuff that's built into tvs is streaming all the stuff that's built into game consoles is streaming it's a good point. Right. That's I guess true. Use, like, doesn't Voodoo have a, a way? Like, if you download files, you can pl- play through their client. I don't think so. Uh, yeah. At least not that I've seen. All I've ever done okay. on Voodoo is stream. Yeah, I, I think they have, or someone, some, one of those movie, like movies anywhere, or one of those kind of clients. I thought had an, a, the ability to you, you could use the download to watch. But that is a good point. I didn't think about. That. Yeah. <laughs> um, I guess I haven't watched a movie that I've just downloaded for a while, except for maybe on my. Is the move? Is Mulan? Is it going to be any good? Does anyone know? It looks cool. It's actually not even going to be like a remake of the of the Disney version of Mulan. Like it is, but it isn't. Um, it's actually going to be more about the historical, like the legend and everything. So there's no, there's not, it's not going to be a musical. And no there's Mushu, no Eddie Murphy. No, yeah, no Eddie Murphy. It's no Mushu in general. <laughs> no little tiny dragon. Uh, the song, in it, right? Yeah, Jet Li's in it. Um, and the, the songs are all going to be like pastiches, really. Like, they're like, they're going to be like orchestral. So you hear the song and you're like, oh, hey, that's Dark Side of the Moon or whatever. Oh, uh, okay. Interesting. But it, it, they're, it's not going to be like they're singing the song. Sure. So. Hmm. Which will be. No choreographed dance numbers then. I no, think. No part- I think uh, I expect it to be better than, uh, you know, ones like um, uh, Lion King and, uh, you know, shit like that. Um, Right. I hope so. Jeez. It's easy to be worse than or better than Lion King. Yeah, right. I could make a movie better than Lion King. (laughs) Here we go. Coming to YouTube soon. <laughs> Topless Robot presents Tyler King. <laughs> Please? <laughs> What's the bats on, me. damn it? <laughs> um, <laughs> the, uh... Shit, now I can't remember what I was going to say. I can't remember what you were going to say either. God damn. <laughs> Son of a bitch. I believe in you. I believe. Yeah, no, I lost it. I totally lost it. Uh, it had to do with movies and and the current state of things, but yeah, um, shit's fucked up. Everything's yeah. broken. Yeah. Uh, there. Oh yeah, there was. Uh, you mentioned movies anywhere, and I can't remember if I brought this up on a previous uh, uh, episode or not. But um, so I have a Google Family account. And Kaylin is uh, one of the members in in that family group, and um, my uh, uh, buddy Nate is uh, one of the members in that family group. And uh, so that means that like I can share my Google Play Pass with them, so they can download uh, you know mobile games that are on the Play Pass and uh, apps and stuff like that that are on the Play Pass. <clears throat> and okay. Um, I didn't realize. So one day I'm looking through and on my TV in YouTube, uh, you have to kind of dig in order to find purchases. And just for some reason, I decided to look at my purchases on YouTube um, because I didn't think I would have any. And there's this huge collection of movies there, like a (laughs) whole bunch of movies there. I'm like, I, I, I don't. And it's all movies that I'd watch. You start checking your bank receipts. It's like (laughs) all the X-Men movies and all that kind of shit. And I'm like, I have no idea what any of this came from. There's some questionable movies on there. You know. um, uh, So I'm, yeah, looking through purchase receipts, looking through purchase history on Google. Nothing. Nothing at all. And so I text Kaylin. I'm like, hey, 
may, you know, thinking maybe they that uh, if you buy a movie on Google, it shares it with the, with your family. So I text Kalen. I'm like, hey, have you ever bought a movie on on Google? He's like, no, I buy all mine on Amazon. I'm like, all right. And so I I message Nate, and he was like, no, I have I have no idea what you're talking about. So I'm like, what the fuck? Where is this coming from? And then Nate messages me back. He goes, oh, I just tied my Google account to my Movies Anywhere account. So maybe that's why. And sure enough, that's why. So with Movies Anywhere, if you tie your Vudu, your Amazon, your Google, like it supports all those, any movies that support Movies Anywhere show up on all those platforms. And so with Google that means that it shares with your family account that's awesome yeah so you have access to a whole bunch of movies right (laughs) Mm -hmm. thanks nate yeah dude thanks nate put in some requests and so i did the same and now all of my movies are in our uh uh well not all of my movies but all the ones that support it anyway are in our family shared in addition to uh uh you know nate's movies so it's yeah, really cool. And I wish I had known about this Movies Anywhere thing a long time ago. Because when I first started buying movies digitally, I decided like that I wanted them on Amazon. So I bought a couple of movies on Amazon. I have Get Out on Amazon. I have Baby Driver on Amazon. Um, and uh, then I decided that Voodoo was where I should do them all. Uh, because more, most often when you buy a movie, like a uh, physical copy, uh, the uh, digital copy that it comes with is a voodoo copy. So uh, I decided everything was going to be on voodoo. So I rebought Baby Driver earlier this year. So I just so I could have everything in one place. And really all I needed to do was movies everywhere. And <laughs> it would have synced Baby Driver over. Well, now you're going to have to buy it again on Movies Anywhere. Just... <laughs> but it won't sync with Mulan. Nope. Nope. Not nope. Only Disney Plus. Only Disney Plus. I wonder if they'll bring down the price as they get further into its release. Like, $30 will be, like, the we- the first weekend, kind of, or first couple weeks, or during its, what it would be its what theatrical would be a, Yeah, the theatrical, so, I mean, realistically, we're talking about, like, three to six months. Yeah, and then after that, it's, like, wait. $10 or something, right? Yeah, yeah it's not good. something that I feel like I need to see day one. <laughs> if nah. you have kids, maybe. I don't, and won't. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I shan't. We, um... Never kids. So uh, to uh, change the topic a little bit, uh, because uh, uh, I really want to talk about this thing. So I mentioned uh, last week that I uh, pre-ordered a Ninja Turtles figure from Super 7 about a year ago. And it came in last Monday. And I did a video about it. It's up on our YouTube channel. Um, But I got uh, Baxter Stockman. And man... This is a great figure. Oh, that's cool. It's like a a really nice, highly detailed, high articulation version of the original Playmates, Baxter Stockman. Like all of this, you know, bends and uh, like it's got great articulation, really, really beautiful detail. And what's big too. Yeah. Great, great size. Just really, really beautiful. And even the packaging was really nice. Um, and I had never bought a collectible from Super 7 before, and Super 7 is mostly known for the reaction figures, which are kind of like their own stylist, stylistic, you know, kind of thing, like, um, uh, how Funko has their pop figures and, and all that kind of shit. Like, they've got reaction figures, which are, like, four joints, you know, arms move this way, legs move this way, and that's it. And they're really simple figures. And it never really appealed to me. Um, so I didn't know what to expect. So when this pre-order came up for their Ultimates, I was like, yeah, that looks pretty cool. And so I pre-ordered just one of them to see what it would be like and uh, get a sense of the quality before I decided to buy in on the other three in the first wave. And... Uh, I can't get the other three in the first wave. 
anymore. Aww. Like you had to pre-order everything and now they've done wave two and wave three. And, and I guess I can do pre-orders through some stores, but super seven, uh, like through their website, all pre-orders are done for wave two and wave three. So <laughs> they did pre-orders for wave two and wave three before I even got my first wave one figure. That sucks. Yeah. Dang. I get wanting to wait and see how it turned out, but damn. Yeah. And they're gorgeous damn. figures. At least he got one. He's cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And eventually I'm going to have to find a way. No, not yet. They're coming in this month. Woo. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that. I, speaking of action figures, um, I sent that picture over a group mm -hmm. chat, but my, uh, my Kirby uh your box, pancake finally pancake yeah, my, kirby's my pancake kirby's finally showed up so i got a whole bunch of little kirby's hanging up on my mantle which i'll go grab them in the post show uh <clears> but it, <throat> like they're, they're just adorable like one's a little pancake kirby one's a kirby that's in a that's on a stump sleeping one's a kirby that's in like an apple and they're just kind of super cute and then i also, <laughs> it also came with like a plushy kirby and then uh, a couple of uh, nice. like a little Kirby, key, a little keychain Kirby, Kirby and, Red and Warp uh, Star. I mean, I got that thing and I ordered that thing in like January, and I just came, and I'm very happy with it. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> they have joined. Uh, they have joined my weird collection of groups on my mantle. <laughs> <laughs> Did I ever tell you about my random group collection that I have? I just somehow have now. <laughs> <laughs> I basically think so because I remember uh, it coming up when uh, you came home with the shoulder Groot. Yes. Yeah. I just was like looking around and I, all of a sudden I looked up at my freaking mantle and I had accumulated like 10 Groots. <laughs> I got I got three for my birthday last year. I got a shoulder Groot for uh, for uh, from Disney World or Disneyland. And then I bought like these little flower pot groups and got another flower pot group from someone as a gift. And then I had a group plushie and I'm just like, why do I have so many groups? So, I don't even so like now. Groot. <laughs> <laughs> we are Groot. <laughs> so yeah, I have, I'm the Groot guy now, apparently. <laughs> um, so <clears throat> Tyler, I was telling you about this a little bit. I got uh, a new uh, uh, controller uh, for my cell phone, the Razer Kishi. And Ooh, I was reading about that. That thing looks cool. So, like, when it's all compact, it looks like this. Everything, you know, all tight and, and, and all that. But then there's these two tabs that you pull on the back, and it expands. And then it, you just take your cell phone, and there's a USB-C on this side. And then oh. this pulls over at the other side and uh, you have basically like a Nintendo Switch style uh, control for your cell phone and cool. so with uh, since I've been trying all the uh, cloud gaming services like Stadia and xCloud and GeForce Now um, I, it's been a great way to you know uh, give that a try and I find this to be like seriously, just the most comfortable way to game uh, when like I'm like I said, I've been having a hard time getting out of bed lately. And um, it's mm -hmm. uh, uh, actually how I spent hours playing mm -hmm. No Man's Sky using GeForce Now uh, in this format. That is awesome. How does this, really uh, cool. No Man's Sky look on, on mobile? Like it right, so it's done. running on GeForce now, so it's rendering oh, yeah. on GeForce's servers. So great. See, it That's basically cool. loads up a Steam interface, and uh, uh, since I chose uh, No Man's Sky specifically, it's going to take a second, and then it'll load right into No Man's Sky from the Steam interface. But uh, you can actually load straight into Steam Big Picture mode and try. 
uh, installing games because it basically just gives you access to your Steam library. That's why GeForce Now is, in my opinion, the best option for um, for cloud uh, gaming. But um, the uh, um, there are only some games that they officially support, some they definitely don't support, and some that they don't have full support for. So uh, you have to reinstall them every time you uh, connect to their service. That's annoying. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a little annoying. But, yeah, I mean, it's on their infrastructure, so it's not like you're relying on your download speeds in order to download that game. Oh, uh, I guess that's a good point. How many games? Is it like a good amount of games that are supported yeah, by it? There's a lot know. of games, and technically it's free um, for a GeForce Now account. Uh, it's uh, for 1080p quality and one hour of streaming. Um, and, uh, uh, the founder level is $5 a month and it gives you six hours of continuous streaming, um, before like, I guess you'll have to reconnect or something. No, it's, it's not a day. It's just six hours contiguous. Um, and, uh, um, they also give you, uh, ray tracing. Uh, access uh, on that as well. So, yeah. See, just that's cool. No Does man's sky feel... on my cell phone. It, oh my god! There's my ship. I'm and in my freighter feel right now. Laggy or anything? Nah. Here, I'll hit my. Uh... That's awesome. Yeah. That is really cool. All right, all right. It's kind of weird that they limit if you're paying for it to six hours. I mean, not that. <laughs> and six hours, and you just have to reestablish the connection, and then yeah, you can go I another guess. six hours. I, I haven't actually run into that limitation yet. Like, I haven't uh, uh, done six hours at a time. I'll usually do, you know, like two or three hours at a time, and then. But yeah, especially with this Razer Kishi controller. It's been great. Kishi. Really, really comfortable. Yeah, I've been eyeing those uh, <clears throat> type of cell phone clamp controllers, and uh, they all just look okay. None of them look very good, but I saw a review for that one on Gizmodo, and I was contemplating. You know, the, so that's awesome. You got uh, it. The triggers still feel a little mushy, um, and uh, I guess a D-pad is kind of mush, but it's it's not terrible. Uh, but specifically, the triggers are uh, feel a little mush. Um, and I was worried that, uh, but it does have an, uh, the thumbstick press in, so you have an L2 uh, or an L3 and an R3. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, mm -hmm. I was worried that uh, the triggers wouldn't be analog. So uh, I tested it in uh, Trials Rising. And uh, the triggers are analog, it seems. So uh, it, you know, works just as well as any Xbox controller. I'm gonna have to check that out. Though I never play That's games awesome. on my phone, so <laughs> like literally never. I don't think I've ever played with the Apple. cloud services. Uh, it it works great. It works uh, great on Stadia. Works great on X Cloud. Works great. And actually, uh, Razer actually released what is basically the official xCloud controller. They have the same controller, but uh, Xbox branded. So oh. the home button is an Xbox button and, and the colors all match up with an Xbox controller and stuff. Uh, they've done a really, really great job with that controller. And even That's with native cool. stuff, like I uh, have played, um, I have Symphony of the Night and uh, played Symphony of the Night on uh, my cell phone, feels great. Uh, played uh, Don't Starve, uh, and that feels great. Um, and uh, I have a PSP emulator uh, on my cell phone, uh, and nice. it plays PSP games beautifully, and having that controller is awesome. I might have to try it. I might have to try that, and I also might have to get a Galaxy Note so I can enjoy it more. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, having the screen real estate is pretty nice. <clears throat> Do you have a note? Is that what you have? Yeah, this a is a Note 10 Plus. Okay. 
Yeah, because I got the Pixel 3. It's got decent screen size, but I feel like with gaming, it wouldn't be the best. I kind of want to, I, I, if, I, if, I, if I was going to try out one of those services, I'd probably upload to a Note. Note 10. Uh, Note 20 is coming out soon. Is it really? Yeah. Just in time for me to finish paying off my Pixel. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, what I may do is, uh, so I'll have this note paid off in about a year. And um, what I'm going to probably do is instead of trade this in for a credit, keep it and uh, use it as a, a gaming over Wi-Fi device. And um, then... I, I'm super curious about foldable phones. So my <laughs> next primary phone, I want to switch to uh, either the Galaxy Z Flip, whatever uh, version that's going to end up, you know, being at that time, or uh, the Motorola Razor, um, depending on which, you know, ends up looking the best, you know, in, in a, about a year. What? I feel like with foldable phones, they announced all of those and it was like a big hullabaloo for a couple months. Then they all released. And I haven't heard anything. Oh, well, it's, it's because that, it's like, the first generation of foldable phones. So okay. the first generation of anything is never going to be great. Um, good, I've seen some reviews for some of the foldable phones. The Razer apparently has very poor battery life and low power because it's it's the old, same form factor as the old razor. It's just all screen now. So right, um, oh, we lost Kalen. We lost a kid. Um, I'll be right back. Okay. Uh, the uh, um, so pretty much everything that runs the razor is in the little notch at the bottom of the screen. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So uh, that's one issue with the razor. And then the Galaxy Fold had problems but where it was the creasing and stuff like yeah. that. Um, but the Z Flip um, got better reviews, but it was still low power because they're putting so much into the design because the, these are so, these have to be so like intricately designed that it's That's difficult to get power out of those so they right. don't uh hold up in terms of power with current generation normal candy bar phones i kind of wonder to be honest if they can't get it right and it doesn't sell a lot since they're so expensive i wonder if we'll start seeing kind of like a departure from them since i mean i know obviously you're right the first generation normally doesn't doesn't do great but I mean, I remember when when Galaxy or when Samsung was releasing the Edge phones, and that was going to be like the next big thing, and and the, the the curved glass on the side and all of that stuff. Shut up! Phone. I mean, it kind of um, is. Even on the Note, it's still curved on the side. Yeah, and but it's just like for pretty stylistic things. Like previously, it was gonna because they got rid of the the app store for the. Uh, for the edge as they had it because it had more of a use and this even still has the like edge lighting and stuff like that and the uh, the stuff that that you can bring up on the side oh, yeah. Okay. yeah okay well maybe not maybe so like just... it became uh, a samsung staple design element um the uh i think so right now, there's really only two manufacturers making foldable phones. It's Samsung and Motorola. Um, mm. Motorola's basically been out of the main phone game for God fucking ever. Like, I think the last Motorola phone I bought was was the Razer, mm. the Razer V3. Same. And no, technically, go for any. It. Any phone will fold if you try hard enough. <laughs> <laughs> It'll fold once. 
<laughs> and then you'll continue being able to fold it. <laughs> It'll fold. It, every time it just gets a little easier. Um, <laughs> Sorry. But yeah, so I think we'll see as that technology evolves. Uh, right. We're starting to see a lot more flexible display stuff, and we have kind of for the past you know decade seen more flexible display stuff. I remember the first flexible display that uh, like showed up as an ad in a magazine where it was a flexible LCD display that was used as an ad in a magazine probably about 10 years ago. Um, and that was like the first time that we had seen like flexible displays out in the wild. But flexible displays are becoming more and more common. Like I think LG or Samsung has that fucking that TV that's basically oh, yeah. like a, an entertainment center where it folds up from inside of it. The screen folds up from inside of it. Uh, and that technology is only going to continue to get better. So we've only just seen it show up in cell phones, you know, what, starting last year, year before. So True. Keep I remember. Up with... Yeah, okay. go ahead. You go ahead. Nope. I was <laughs> just going to say, keeping up, <laughs> keeping up with uh, cell phones and that kind of technology as a consumer is so crazy expensive. Like, you h- hear y'all talking like, I'm still paying off my cell phone from, you know, two years ago, and it's like... I just, I, it's it's hard to want to ever upgrade your phone if, if you don't have to. Yeah, I, I definitely hear that. I uh, try to get in on deals because T-Mobile always has these, especially with the Samsung stuff, like buy one, get one deals. So oh, like, I I don't think I paid for Jasmine's last phone because nice. we upgraded at the same time, only pay, made payments on, on my phone. That was it. Uh, and even when I got this one, I traded in Jasmine's old one for a $750 credit um, as part of a promotion. So when I got, I had already upgraded to an S10 and then the Note 10 5G came out and I wanted that. And Jasmine was on an S9, so I traded her S9 in for $750 off of the um, Note 10. Or $650 off, uh, something like that, uh, off the Note 10 5G. So when those deals come up, I I try and take advantage of those deals. Yeah, I mean, I guess if you're doing it often enough and your old phone is still new, you can, you know, get a pretty high trade in value for it, but you gotta keep constantly like shuffling. But, you know, my Pixel 2 is, going to be worthless you know when the four comes out you mean you know, but you said that when the five comes out because they just released the four oh, right, 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 right. Oh, and yeah. that's my next upgrade probably if i were to upgrade phones which i don't technically need to the google 4a that's a great deal i think yeah i actually got my i got the pixel 3 and i got it on a black friday sale for 600 dollars the same year the pixel 3 came out so i was like hell yeah They're great and I then, love the pixels. Yeah, I do too. I do too. It's- One thing uh, Google does really, really well is their cameras. The cameras on those phones are fucking stupid. They're gorgeous. I love my phone. Yeah, I like filmed my last music video and it looks awesome. Not like that there's much to take pictures of nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> Here is my house. Oh my dog. Here is also my house. Oh hey, would you like to see a picture of my house? Here's a picture of me in my house. <laughs> this my is my house. I'm a separate house. It's captured pristinely with the <laughs> <laughs> every fiber. <laughs> so your I know what you want video that was on the Pixel. Mm-hmm. Nice. That's- it was yeah, absolutely yeah. It's great. Uh, you, yeah, because you can do 4K. You can. There's a bunch of different settings you can do, um, but just a little lighting, you know, goes a long way. It looked, yeah, it looked awesome. And there was green screening in that and everything. So, mm-hmm. holy shit! Yeah, that's insane. Like the the fact that we have this kind of technology just in our fucking pockets. Right. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, it's awesome. The Pixel Two from how many years ago is that now? Three years ago? Two years ago? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Film yeah, I mean, it's it's still, a, you know, I think it's a 12 megapixel camera. Yeah, it it 
it it rocks and i've taken good care of it like i want a new phone but that's just me wanting new things but like <laughs> i don't have any reason to get rid of this phone it works perfectly well that's basically <laughs> why i upgrade my phones is because i like seeing what the new thing is and right. i mean i'm a i'm a tech guy like i i really like seeing the new the new stuff if you can yeah you definitely you you should if, if i could i would you know upgrade more often for sure so speaking of new stuff um a new game came out in this past week uh called fall guys and it, it is taking over the internet I love I it. it. I love it so I much. Hate it's it so much I fucking have fun. Been unable to get anything done because of Fall Guys. <laughs> Fuck you, Fall Guys. It's so good. It's so good. It it's so simple. It's difficult to grief other players. It's possible, but it's difficult. So you're not like feeling the griefing that you usually would in some, you know, massive multiplayer kind of thing. <laughs> It's stressful, um, but like I love that it's you know if there's a lot of luck involved and it, it or it can be your fault. I love that you know it's not like if I were to log on to f decide to uh, on a whim to play Fortnite for the first time ever, I'd go on there and these kids you know they'd have the skill set that I would never be able to achieve. But with Fall Guys, like uh, when Bentley gets his surgery, you know, in a week or two, I'm going to bring it over there. And even he who hates and has no video game skills will be able to grasp it and play it and probably, and, you know, and enjoy it. And it's, it's, so it's a, it's a really level playing ground. It's a, yeah. it's a lot of fun. And, uh, for people who don't know what we're talking about, uh, fall guys is basically a battle Royale platformer, obstacle course runner, like you play a little yeah. jelly dude that you can customize the way he looks and that's all that that you have any control over is just the way your your little amorphous blob looks. Yeah. And then it's you like, get uh, thrown into with like it's easy so easy to jump into a game because you start up and it finds, you know, 59 other players, it's 60 players and uh then it just shuffles through their different courses and those courses can be obstacle courses um those courses can be team games so usually once you get down to uh, a number that's evenly divisible by three they'll do a three team team game where like you have to collect the eggs from the center and get them in your basket and then you have that's to go and get the eggs from off. other you know people's baskets and and get them into yours and it, you have to not be the team in last because once that timer runs out the team in last gets eliminated so like after each round you know so many people are getting eliminated until finally you get down to the last you know level which can be an obstacle course in order to run and grab a crown it can be like this thing of uh, layers of hex pads where uh, when you step on the hex pad it disappears so you have to try not to fall all the way through all of the hex pads into the goop and be the mm -hmm. last person remaining in order to win overall but like it's all king of the hill kind of shit um there's uh little games of uh uh you have to keep a a tail uh is so like if someone has a tail you have to steal it or and then you have to try and, game, and keep yeah. it like yeah kind of a capture the flag sort of thing Th it, there's so many super simple super easy to understand games like just jumping in and it, it's so fun it is and uh and yeah you know anyone can get in and play it and you can be the most skilled player in the world and then you get it on a team and if your team sucks like it can knock you out like all of a sudden if everyone congeals into a pile and you're out in front like you know you could run through a whole obstacle course easy like there's so many variables in it uh it's and free it's on like ps plus uh, right now isn't it yeah, free on PS Plus. I just downloaded it last night, but I haven't had a chance to play it yet. I want to play yeah, it. It's addictive. Um, it's like uh, Takeshi's Castle or uh, MXC. Yeah, yes. Um, a little bit of uh, said Nickelodeon game. Oh, Nickelodeon Guts. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, with the that, aggro crag. Uh, yeah, yeah, Guts. Uh, mm -hmm. Guts. Um, oh my yeah, god! It's it's, it's awesome. Back. <laughs> I haven't thought of guts in forever. 
That is a blast. That actually of just that. reminded me that Nickelodeon also had one that was called Wild and Crazy Sports. Yeah, I forgot about Wild and Crazy Sports. Mm-hmm. Now I want to go back and be a little kid and watch this shit. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, Fall Guys it doesn't hold up. Has taken over, uh, like all of the streamers that I watch and all the YouTubers that I watch. Everyone is playing Fall Guys. Uh, it's too much fun. It is way too much fun. I haven't heard a game talked about this much since Fortnite. I'm not gonna lie. Right. <laughs> like, it, was, it was a brilliant move for them to release it for free on PS Plus. Like, uh, yeah, it's and it's so accessible. You know, it's three buttons. You know, and movement. Yep, it's great. Not I even like, two buttons. I've never. Oh yeah, no, it is three buttons because you can dive. I forgot about that. Yeah, I've never gotten a crown, um, but I always have fun i get really frustrated but i i always have fun and keep playing more like every day i'm just try, every day i'll log in i was like i just want to get one level up and then i force myself to stop because yeah you could just play for hours yeah have you won one yet ryan uh i have come very very close but i have not <laughs> yet won uh, i've come Same. in first on plenty um mm-hmm. uh, on plenty individual rounds but i've not won a, a, a full run I had the crown in sight, and I didn't realize that it the went up and, up down, and down, so I yeah. jumped for it, and I just went underneath it, and I would have waited two seconds. I was so far out ahead of everyone. I could have got it, and I just rookie mistake. There it. are just two right things <laughs> that, that people need to know when they're on that obstacle course, like that aggro crag shit on the last uh, uh, level to get the crown. Fall Mountain. Fall Mountain, that's right. Uh, one thing. The crown goes up and down, like Kalen just said. So you have to time your jump to get to the crown once you get to the edge uh, or once you get to the end. Um, And two, jumping into the crown is not enough. You have to grab it. Oh, this is going to help me a lot. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Also, pro tip strats is uh, on go right hand uh, side. What, what were you saying? Go right hand side on on Fall oh. Mountain. If you're on the the level with the the uh, mm. the balance beam, or not Seesaws, the balance beam. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, uh, I recommend diving every time. Otherwise, a lot of times you'll fall, you'll you'll land, and your player will like trip up and kind of roll down the thing. But if you dive, you get a nice uh, easy landing, and you get right up. That's my recommendation. My pro tip. <laughs> you want to be. So you want to be in the front on that one, uh, because yes. oh, once the so masses hit those fucking those uh, those seesaws, balance beams. Oh, oh yeah, seesaws. Yeah. Oof. It is. And people are it on is one ugly. side and it's going like this, and you're like, "Come on, everybody! Like, we just got to move the other side," and they're not, and you're like, people are trying to take shortcuts, and they're screwing you over, and. I've gotten really frustrated playing that. <laughs> uh, there's like, is, also is, I, uh, yeah. two um, uh, uh, very MXC uh, game where uh, you're f- yeah the there's all these doorways and only a couple of them will allow you to cl- uh, jump through them. That one you don't want to be up front. You just wait and and see and like kind of try and stay separate and from the crowd. But yeah, and everyone, oh, it's it's madness. It's just some of the best chaos I've ever witnessed in a game. Yeah, it is what? incredible, and of course, published by Devolver Digital. Bless their hearts. Welcome to uh, the Topless Robot Podcast. It's shameless shills for Devol- Devolver Digital. We, we <laughs> simp Devolver Digital. We do. We are the ultimate Devolver Digital simps. Please notice us, Devolver. <laughs> Devolver Simpai. <laughs> yeah. So I got the uh, the new uh, the Blasphemous finally came out with the new DLC. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so they've uh, uh, redone a bunch of the art. It looks really fantastic. And then there's new levels and uh, new bosses that you have to do in New Game Plus only. And, uh, yeah, it's it's pretty intense. And you have to select, like, a, a handicap at the beginning of the game. There's three different ones to choose from, and they all have different advantages and disadvantages. And it's really revi- revitalized the game for me. It's a lot of fun. I've been huh. st- streaming it on the, the yeah, Snailmate Twitch that, channel. That game has such beautiful artwork. It's it looks so even good. better now. 
it's it's amazing so did they uh just like re-up the the artwork across the board for or is it only in the dlc no um yeah so if you were to start a brand new game before you can get to the dlc new game plus like you'll notice certain characters are uh better backgrounds there's a lot more kind of going on in them they really did a lot to it Hmm. it's impressive yeah and blasphemous was in last month's uh humble choice bundle um so the humble monthly uh which they've now called humble choice uh so uh if you're not doing that get on that because it's like 12 bucks a month and you get 10 games every month and you get to keep them yeah well that's really cool you get steam keys i'm just not going to do this never do anything (laughs) besides play games (laughs) that's too much i know i know that's too much that's too much power for any one man to have I mean, I've got 1,200 games on Steam. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to work through a list. Um, once I do this Blasphemous thing, I'm going to go back and I'm going to play Alan Wake uh, in anticipation of the new the Control, new Control DLC. DLC. Yes, Control is one of my favorite games of all time. It is one of um, the best games I've ever played in my it's life. incredible. And the first DLC was awesome, the foundation. And I'm so stoked on the new one. And I really, so I'm going to go play Alan Wake because they tie into each other. Yep. Uh, Because they're both uh, Remedy, right? Remedy. Yeah. Um, Yeah. I still need to beat Control. Oh, you gotta. You gotta. I've been asking this, but I actually have no idea what Control is about. I've heard it's great, and I've not seen, I actually looked it up. What is it? You can't, it's it's hard to describe. You gotta do it. It's this awesome environment this awesome building that you're going through and the mystery is unraveling and but it's also uh kind of thickening at the same time it's supernatural um and it's a mind fuck but it's like it all kind of it all makes sense and it's grounded at the same time it's it's a bunch of contradictions but the combat is incredible the character uh the main character jesse fadden is awesome uh you know the whole the uh, environment is another character in the game thing is totally true with this like the building itself is just like you just want to keep going and keep exploring but the combat is amazing it really is and the powers that you get are uh, incredible Um, yeah you start flying around and moving stuff and the way that the physics work when you're picking things up and throwing them and it's great it all feels so good um it's so empowering does, does it feel like you're in control it does. It does. <laughs> there it is. Uh, I think X Files and Fringe were the same thing. Were were together. Like it's it's that kind of thing. It's it's you know this supernatural. It's the the organization like the FBI. It's uh, the CBI or or. No, what was it? Uh, something, uh, something BC. The Bureau, Federal Bureau FBC, of BC. That's what it is. Yeah. Um, the uh, so you've got an organization, but it's more of these kind of paranormally pseudosciency things, like what you would expect from Fringe, as opposed okay. to X Files, which is like aliens. You know, this <laughs> is more like. I don't know, just these neat, you know, like parallel dimension, you know, kind of things uh, that, you know, you get out of fringe. Um, So mash those two together and you've got control and it's super fucking cool. Super fucking cool. I would love to play it again with a fresh perspective because it is just so good. But I mean, I would play it again regardless. Like there's a few games not very many games that i want to like play over again but that game is it it just makes you want to just keep going and with this second dlc especially it's such a huge drop that alan wake's going to be in that um and uh uh, hints to it throughout the base game about alan wake but they just flat out showed him in uh the fucking trailer for the new dlc right yeah oh that's cool yeah I'm excited. I, I, I have to try this I'm, one. <laughs> I'm so excited. AWE, that, that stands for what now? Alan Wake Edition? It's No, it actually <laughs> stands for Altered World Event, 
which are what any of the phenomenon that the Federal Bureau, Bureau of Control documents. Anytime there's like something floating or some sort of weird object that is turning people into frogs or something, that's an altered world event. And the events of Alan Wake were an altered uh, are world documented event. in control as an as just one of the many altered world events that you find you know papers for. And so like they drop little things about it, but that's so cool. AWE yeah. actually technically doesn't stand for Alan Wake. <laughs> but we all know or it does really it <laughs> or does it so i've never played alan wake i got it on my 360 um well i played the first chapter but uh so i'm gonna stream all that this month before the dlc comes out i played a bit of both of them uh and i love alan wake as a character uh he's a great character and they're such interesting environments and and such like seriously interesting games and you can see kind of you know how they ended up getting to control um in uh some of the stuff that they touch on in the alan wake games yep i'm excited yeah uh by control if you haven't yet by control hey tyler get control I'm going especially to- if you have a if you're PC gaming and you have a PC that can do ray tracing and stuff like that, oh, like it will look so and feel pretty. so good. I have it on the PlayStation. Um, there's, you know, some frame rate things when you're all the physics are going crazy, but at no point did it make me frustrated or, you know, ruin the game for me. Like it is so a million percent worth playing. Yeah, on I, my uh, uh, GeForce RTX 2080 Super, uh, it looks very, very pretty. <laughs> I just, I just, I'm jealous. I just checked uh, Target and they're out of stock, so I guess they're out of control. <laughs> oh, I like that one. <laughs> <laughs> I live for that sound. <laughs> oh wow! 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 <laughs> What else happened this week? Um, I feel like I went to bed yesterday right after this podcast and then woke up. (laughs) To me, I'm not even going to lie. Saw some uh, uh, extended footage of uh, Crash Bandicoot 4, uh, which looks gorgeous. Yeah, that was happening. Um, You can play through the entire game as Coco. Um, And uh, yeah. Uh, it, it just, I'm super excited for, for that. So, so this is a, a sequel to Crash Bandicoot 3, correct? Yes. So they're no. retconning it like the original fourth Crash Bandicoot game didn't happen. Which was what, the fucking Titans or whatever the, the hell it was? Or Crash oh, of the can't Titans? I remember what it's called. Maybe. I don't uh, remember what I came didn't. out after Crash Bandicoot 3. I'm uh yeah. My All I know is everything that, is... that that came out after Crash Bandicoot three didn't stick to the same formula that the original three Crash Bandicoot games did, and uh, so this is a return to form, uh, and uh, it's about time, uh, which uh, looks it looks great. It looks fucking great, and considering how uh, well the um, uh, first three Crash Bandicoot games translated to the current generation in the uh, remaster or remake. Uh, they mm. look fucking outstanding. Yeah. So I think I that... played the first two, and I don't think I ever beat either. Of... What is it? Uh, Toys for Bob? Is that the name of the company? Toys for Bob is the name of the company that's doing uh, four. Yeah. They also did the Spyro remake, and the Spyro trilogy, remake was great. Looked so good it was great it was beautiful they did a killer job with that my brother was playing it on his uh ps pro and i was blown away by how good it all looked just how crisp and beautiful and pretty it was yeah i've got it on uh, xbox one and uh switch and actually another thing that uh came up uh, in the humble monthly bundle amazingly 12 bucks in the in the same month you got uh the spyro uh uh games and uh the crash bandicoot games Jeez. for wow. pc yeah do you uh 
retroactively get any of the games or if you, I were to sign up now, I would be, you know, at the whim of whatever comes out next. If you were to sign up now, you would get what's next. Uh, but they do have cool. the humble vault, which is, uh, just a running catalog of like indie games D- that are DRM free that you just gain access to. Oh. So, I mean, you know, we do have a partnership with them, but I'm not putting any partnership stuff up. Um, Oh yeah, I forgot about that. It's been a while. It's been a while. It's been a while. Well, it, because when we first started doing, you know, this <laughs> stuff, you like that? I thought that it lended, uh, <laughs> that it that made us look more official uh, to have <laughs> partnerships and stuff like that, and it was, just, you know, whatever. Um, the let me see, where's the, the? I think they call it the humble trove. That's what it is. So in the humble trove, they have ninety plus games. Uh, so the flame and the flood getting over it race the sun um flame uh, and the flood is fun rumbo a short hike <laughs> dear esther uh dear esther is good too rius uh orwell trine epistory the typing chronicles indiana jones and the fate of atlantis uh dungeon souls hacknet keyboard sports renowned explorers the whispered Wor- world uh, Blackguards, Hitchhiker, Deponia, X-Wing Alliance, Overture, Yo Jim Brawl. Um, yeah, there's a ton of games in the uh, in the Trove. Snake Pass, Vape Escape, When Ski Lifts Go Wrong, <laughs> which That's just sounds fun. <laughs> Such a ridiculous name for a game. <laughs> when ski lives, go. lives go wrong. <laughs> but yeah, so um, <laughs> those are all the games, and apparently they add games to it every month in the in the Trove library. So when you have humble choice, you you get you know access to all those, uh, and they're all DRM free. So you don't get keys for those; you just get downloads for those. I think, uh, and then. Um, so the games for July, what I got this past month. So because I'm on a classic subscription, like they grandfathered me in when they changed to this choice thing. So at $12 a month, I get to choose 10 games. Uh, so I got uh, Age of Wonders, Planetfall, uh, Void Bastards, Battlestar Galactica, Deadlock, Yuppie Psycho, uh, Sigma Theory, Metal Unit, uh, Don't Escape, Four Days to Survive, Verlet Swing, uh, Welcome to Basing Stroke, and uh, Earthlock uh, this past month. And uh, I think, th- so like they announced what the games are this coming month, and they announced that this coming month, everyone gets all 12 games. And so those games are, let's see here. Vampire, Hello Neighbor, and uh, Hello Neighbor Hide and Seek, War Groove, Call of Cthulhu, Little Big Workshop, Genesis Alpha One, uh, Automa Chef, Through the Darkest of Times, American Fugitive, State of Amer- uh, State of Emergency, uh, The Coma Two, Vicious Sisters, We Were Together, uh, and A Case of Distrust. Mm, Man. Call of Cthulhu. Uh. Yeah, I've heard good things about that uh, game. I've been wanting to check it out. And Wargroove is great. If you loved Advance Wars, Wargroove is right up your alley. Oh, that's right. I forgot about Wargroove. Oh, I might have. God damn it, Ryan. It's like 12. That's a dollar a game. You get each of those games for a dollar. Like I said, God damn it, Ryan. (laughs) Of course, I have to subscribe for those. I mean, since we are... We do have a partnership with them. Head to toplessrobot.com slash humble and um, uh, sign up there. And of course, that helps us out if you do decide to do that. But like, seriously, the humble choice, the, the what used to be humble monthly uh, before they were bought by IGN um, is it's always been just a killer fucking deal. So... Yeah. I'm getting a hey boop. The doc is in doctor. the house. Doctor. Hello. 
Doctor. 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 <laughs> he looks very grumpy. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, his lips it, are starting to curl. <laughs> oh, that's just his face now. I know. Oh, so cute. Oh, oh, oh. Well, um, the camera's not very flattering, Doctor. <laughs> doctor. <laughs> We have Sorry. come to the end of the episode. Uh, so uh, let's uh, revisit what uh, has been each of your uh, highlights of this past week. Highlight. Hmm. I am uh, working on a episode or an episodic thing. I kind of talked to you, Ryan, about it. I'm having mm-hmm. conversations with different uh game developers um so i've already spoken to uh um let's see james silva from ska studios he made uh salt and sanctuary charlie murders and uh dishwasher um really cool guy had some really good conversations i'm in the processing process of editing that video had we talked for like three hours nice um so i got to chop all that down and And that's going to be coming out through topless robot right uh yeah i just gotta i have no idea i've been really slacking on editing all that (laughs) kind of like how i've been slapping slacking on editing the three videos that you and i made like over a year Uh, ago uh, right exactly um and then i did another video with uh oh i'm blanking on his name but he developed uh one strike and he's currently developing two strikes and it's uh, like a samurai dueling game it's really cool oh cool um, if you're into Ghosts of Tsushima um, and that kind of Akira Kurosawa look, check out twostrikes.com uh, or twostrikesgame.com and get the demo for Two Strikes. It is one of the coolest looking things I've ever seen. Hmm. You have to play this game. One Strikes is a really great game. It's a fun little dueling game you can play with your friends. But uh, the work that he's doing on this Two Strikes game is freaking awesome he's from uh brazil he's living in spain we had a really good conversation um so i'm gonna be piecing those together at some point cool hell yeah yeah that was a that was nice to talk to some other people from different places and kind of get some (laughs) different perspectives on things i kind (laughs) of yeah it was nice yeah, to like, talk to someone besides like, you fuckers (laughs) (laughs) i I know i I felt bad because i was like i was talking to them and like we like I said, I talked to James uh, for like three hours and I was just like, oh, man, it was really nice talking to just someone different. Like, no offense to you or my family or anyone, but it was just like, it's just nice to to talk to people again. And it felt, you know, like the world felt no- normal for a couple of hours. No, I see how it is, Kaylee. That's fine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I see what I see. I see what's going on here. That's fine. I don't know. Oh, whatever. Oh. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm just gonna see myself. <laughs> I see I'm not wanted here anymore. Tyler, what was the highlight of your week? Hmm, highlight of my week. Ah, uh, man, I've been on a sports kick. Uh, I, I just, it's been this, like I know I've that was that's been like my highlight for the last couple times I've talked about it. But basketball being back has been such a blast. And the Suns are actually doing five in a row, well. right? Yeah, we're the only team that hasn't lost since the since the uh, uh, NBA restarted. And I mean, it's just cool. Like, there's again, I, I know I've already talked about it, but the bubble stuff is awesome. You can like literally, you can go. There's a I don't know how to do it. I kind of want to do it, but you can like join a Zoom call and show up as a fan in it for games, and like they'll show like. The, like you're like literally in a zoom call and you have your webcam and in the Orlando bubble at the courts, they have like a big old led screen that's on the side and it shows fans from all over the world who are watching huh. and like you can just be on it and like, and be supporting your team and whatnot. Interesting. So it's, it's kind of cool. cool. I didn't know that. Yeah. Wow. And it's, it's kind of funny too. Cause like watching the games, like random celebrities will pop in every once in a while. And <laughs> Just random people and they're like, oh, hey, look, there's, uh, you know, Shaq was on one. And <laughs> it's like, he's just in the background. It's kind of funny. Hmm. So, but yeah, basketball has been a lot of fun. So Kalis and I have been watching a, a shit ton of basketball and just 
been a long time since I could have, I've enjoyed Arizona sports because we've been horrible. But yeah, that's, that's my, that's my highlight. Oh, and weird. This is a not real highlight, but I know I've talked about how it's just funny. Cause like basketball is doing so well with the restart, not a single person's been uh, diagnosed with COVID that like for people that are in the bubble, like they test every day and not a single person's been that that's already there has been has uh uh been diagnosed that's what happens um, when you isolate yeah meanwhile baseball who did yeah. the exact opposite thing the marlins had to fucking cancel their season wasn't it or they're not still not playing they're not canceled but they they have two weeks where they can't play because they have no uh how do they factor done. that in at the end of season like as far <laughs> right just the fucking to, season, guys. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be. There's no chance that this season ends because the the card the St. Louis Cardinals also a whole bunch of them went to a fucking casino and yeah. And wasn't the Marlins because <laughs> a whole bunch of them went to a strip club? Yep. And just Come yeah, on, guys. It's, it's, it's so stupid. It's so stupid. And then I think another team also just got the Phillies. The Phillies got yep. hit because they played against the Marlins. Oh my they, god! <laughs> it's so fucking dumb. But yeah, good, so game, good, good game. Good game. Good game. <laughs> COVID. Good game. <laughs> More like COVID. Good game. COVID. Good game. Yeah. COVID, right. Good game. God. But, dang. So yeah, basketball good on you. Baseball shame. Shame. <laughs> you get the you get the shame bell. It's so bad. But yeah, that, that was my week. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess uh, we can especially call baseball America's pastime now <laughs> because there's nothing more American America, than it's getting pastime. COVID. That's true. Oh, my God. We're just... <laughs> Do we have to change uh, the saying from as American as apple pie or in baseball to as American as... Uh, crying in a store because you have to wear a mask. <laughs> <laughs> Giving your friends and family an infectious disease because oh, you God. felt like your rights were being infringed upon. <laughs> Doesn't roll out the tongue very well. Not, right? not, <laughs> not quite as much. Oh, oh Christ. What was, uh, what was your highlight, Ryan? Um, you know, it's it's been a, a very rough week. Um in you know uh kind of navigating uh side effects from zoloft uh and uh stuff like that but what has made it uh, there there are a couple of things that have made it uh actually a few things that have made it more um tolerable um one is uh the incredible support from my girlfriend jasmine I mean, she just like it, one of the things that's a side effect of, of Zoloft is like a decreased appetite. Um, and so I forget to eat like I already forgot to eat pretty regularly before I was on Zoloft. Now I forget to eat all the fucking time. And uh, so like even uh, just today, uh, while I'm you know playing No Man's Sky this morning, uh, Jasmine just comes in and hands me uh, homemade eggs Benedict, but we didn't have ham and we didn't have uh, English muffins. So she made it on, she made homemade hollandaise sauce uh, mm. on top of uh, uh, toasted uh, potato bread uh, with bacon instead of ham. It was fucking great. It was oh, so good. And I awesome. love, I love me some Benedict's. And oh, yeah. just like, I didn't ask for that. I didn't ask for shit. 90% of the time, I'm not asking for shit. Jasmine just comes in and is like, here. And I'm like, oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Um, oh, that has made awesome. uh, this past week uh, significantly easier for me. Um, also, uh, this this Razer Kishi controller, man. Like, just like using this and, and when you feel like you physically can't get out of bed like you actually physically are strained to get out of bed uh being able to play like i've got steam link on my phone i've got stadia i've got geforce now and i've got uh 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 x cloud so getting to still play what you know whatever games that that i want to pl play and doing so comfortably with this controller has been great 
And the other thing is I've been rewatching uh, Eureka, which is a ton of fun. Oh, I've heard you. But yeah, that's that's been. I mean, I I am. Uh, really, throughout all this, I feel like I, I've been just the luckiest dude in the world to live with my you know girlfriend of four plus years and have the support and have it be you know just easy and comfortable so it's awesome if you're watching jasmine or listening thank you for taking care of our boy <laughs> yeah Good job because awesome. god knows i could i would not be able to take care of myself I mean, look at him. Can't you tell? <laughs> I'm, I am a 37 year old mess. The only reason that my hair is this gorgeous is because of her. The only reason that these nails are so glamorous is her. It's yeah. So I'm a lucky motherfucker. Uh, on that note, thank you everybody for watching and or listening. And thank Thanks, you, everybody. Kaylin, for joining us uh, this week. Yeah. At yeah, such short I notice. I'll be around next week. 100 episodes yeah i mean <laughs> i mean i'll be around not 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 necessarily on the show but if you want me to be i'll be around <laughs> <laughs> thank you everyone for watching and for listening we'll see you next week bye, bye. If you like that video, we've got many more videos, tons of episodes of the Topless Robot Podcast, all kinds of Let's Plays, and please subscribe. <laughs> <laughs>